Welcome to the Massage Hodge podcast. My name is Nick Baterka, a licensed massage therapist in Portland, Oregon. I am joined today by Victor Chirazas, a fellow massage therapist in Texas. He's with Rejuvenate Wellness Center in El Paso. Hello. Hey, Nick. How's it going? Welcome, and thank you for being um, part of this ongoing series to talk to a massage therapist from every single state. That's, you know, that's a, that's a great idea. <laughs> I love it. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. You know, um, this is uh, April 8th, 2020, and obviously uh, we're all um, at home and we're all going through this certain crisis. So I just wanted to spend my time in a productive way and kind of just learn more about my industry and, and talk to interesting people. And you certainly are uh, an interesting person. I, I've been listening to your podcast. Uh, which is called the uh, Massage Startup Podcast. Yep. And um, uh, that's a really great resource. I would encourage anyone to sort of dive in there and kind of get some like really uh, real world feel for um, what it's like. I mean, I'm I'm certainly like going through it. I don't know. I don't know if you know anything about my story, but I, I only opened Massage Hodgepodge here in Portland in January, basically. Oh man, okay, so, awesome. Yeah. And then this happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, a time, what a time to be growing a practice. But I, I remain um, optimistic. Um, but I don't know, maybe just give, give us a little bit of uh, background about how you came to massage, um, if you don't mind. If, if you sure, yeah. The way it started for me was about 1994, so, we're going way back. Um, I was in the rock and roll world, musician, played, toured, recorded, had record deal, the whole shebang. Didn't make any money, which is, you know, but that's all right. Music had a great sorry. time. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> um, that said, though, um, the last big tour that I did, um, a friend of mine who was a massage therapist, she gave me like this old massage textbook. I've still seen it in some bookstores. In fact, I still have that book, but mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't remember the name of it, uh, uh, honestly. But um, she said, you're going to need something to read on the road. So while you're sitting in your van, cramped up with your drum set on top of you and everybody's cramped, read this book. And I'm like, hey, appreciate that. So I started reading it. And I was like, whoa, this is, you know, anatomy, uh, manual therapy results you know relax all this stuff I, I was just really like taken aback it and it planted that seed for me mm -hmm. um probably three months before the end of my contract with that label i i visit i came to visit my grandfather who was who he was ill at the time i came back home and while i was here visiting um i was just kind of trying to catch up with friends and family. And I saw this guy, at, I think it was like a shopping center. He was doing chair massage. And I'm like, I, I know what that is. Like, yeah, that book. And, you know, and he had dreadlocks down to his waist. At that time, my hair was that long, you know, a <laughs> uh, hundred pounds ago and many years ago. But <laughs> that said, I, I was talking to him. And I was like, hey, man, tell me about this. You know, and he's like, you know, school's great. It's expensive, but it's worth it. You can make your own hours. And I'm like, uh, that, that's for me. That's what, that, that works for me. So I went back on tour, gave my notice. I think we had about three months before the contract. Gave my notice and um, left the music industry um, as I was doing it back then. And then came back and started massage school right away. Yeah. Wow. You've just been there ever since been there ever since yeah finished up in um i think i eventually got my license in 98 and so i've been doing it ever since yeah wow that's that's a, a nice long career i um i would love to circle back i whenever i talk to a massage therapist especially someone with a long career i love hearing about their their feelings about longevity and what it takes to stay in an industry that's so well known for burnout I mean, let's not circle back. Talk about talk about longevity and, and avoiding burnout really quick. 
I, I would say that the most important thing is really is uh, it's going to sound like very cliche, but most uh, therapists that I've worked with and, and I've taught over the years, it, it really is about body mechanics Yeah. Um, in terms of obviously, I mean, everybody says that during school, but they yeah, also yeah. say during school, you know, you'll probably have a, a lifespan of about four to eight years, maybe. I don't know. I've heard a lot of schools have different theories on that, um, a lot of instructors. And I, and I sit there because I do consulting with schools and I sit there and I'm like, why would you say that? You know, yeah. why would you say that? Um, first of all, second, if that's the case, then let's fix it. Let's find a, a body mechanic approach that makes it to where it's, it's that's not the case. Yeah. For me, if I can, uh, you, you know, what I, what I did early on is, is I met this guy out of San Antonio. Um, his name's Raul Flores, and he's very involved uh, in the massage world, not only in um, massage schools and whatnot, but also in legislation massage. Mm. Um, but what he did is he's got a technique that he calls the work smart method. And again, we're going back to the 90s. Um, he literally started cutting the legs off of massage tables because he owned a massage clinic where they treated workmen's comp uh, people, injuries. Mm -hmm. But pretty soon, the massage therapist he was bringing on board, they were getting injured. And he was like, oh, wait a minute, this, 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 this has to change. So he started working. He's one of those guys that, you know, he finds a better way to do everything. Um, Mm -hmm. um, but so I started learning massage techniques from him, mm -hmm. you know, a few years after I started doing massage and, and it really is just for me, it's lowering the table, using your body weight. And again, I know everybody says that, but it, once you see it and you start, uh, trying it out, um, it makes a huge difference for longevity. Yeah. One of the first things I invested in was, um, a, a lift table. And to me, it's like the idea that you can have all these people in different body sizes and widths and shapes and like think that you can set your table and it'd be good for everybody every session. Right. It's like, yeah. So yeah, that's, the ability to, I can, my table can go almost all the way to the ground and then it goes like really high as well. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's which awesome. Been, which been a lifesaver. Do you, you know, have any strong feelings about, um, you know, like the energetic, emotional side of, of burnout. I've talked to some therapists who feel like body mechanics are important, of course, but sure. they see a lot of people burning out mentally before they burn out physically. I, I do, you know, I've seen that. I've seen that and, and I've been through that myself because yeah. as a business owner, you know, th there's just so many challenges and sometimes you're just like, oh, you know, we're, we're going uphill and then we hit a lull and then we may go down. Uh, and then on top of that, you know, um, not really getting into the whole, I mean, unless you want to, but like some people will talk about, well, you know, you don't want to take on your client's energies or their, their issues or the, whatever the case may be. Uh, that's a factor. Even if you aren't really trying to or not trying to, I mean, you're, you're working with people and their needs. If you don't, if you don't do self-care for yourself, you're going to have some some problems when it comes yeah. to that and then you're going to get to the point where you just you, you leave the industry right because it's just too much and that's that's a that's not a good thing you know that's always sad I, I don't like to see massage therapists leave the industry for those reasons because there's ways to avoid that right yeah. okay so <clears throat> big reason that i've contacted you is to talk about texas all right yeah tell me what what it's like to become a massage therapist <clears throat> in the great state of uh, Texas and um, to, to keep up your license and, and just a little bit about what it's like working there. I mean, I'm sure it's a lot different in El Paso versus Austin versus Dallas, but just maybe from your perspective, working in that state. Sure. Give, give I mean, us first a little feel of what it takes to, to become one and yeah, go from there. So Texas, um, I, I think it was 2017 that went from a 300 hour requirement to a 500 hour requirement. Okay. Um, I mean, and, and there's just like, like a lot that people have to say about that in itself. Um, but that's the, the current requirement. Um, and 
you've got to take, obviously, now the Amblex is the only exam that's available. Um, for a long time, Texas had its own exam. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, uh, but that went away as well. I believe it was in 2017, I believe, when, when that went away. Um, and so that's, that's where we're at right now. There's a lot of uh, back and forth about that in the massage community. Um, not everyone is in favor of the Amblex. Some people want to bring back the old state exam. And I only say that because um, it, it's currently an issue. Like it's currently something that's happening amongst the massage community. Not everybody just kind of came on board with the Amblex. Mm-hmm. Um, I think initially there was a lot of support, but we're seeing now that there's some issues. And so there's some controversy there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Would you like to see a national standard? It would be great, but I'm not sure if we can get there at this point. Right. And I'll I'll tell you why. I mean, even in Texas, um, you know, even though Texas does have a, a state license requirement for instructors, so in order for you to teach massage, you got to get a license, you got to take courses on adult learners, and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Um, but even then, like every school has their own philosophy on massage. Every school has their own standard of massage. Mm-hmm. Um, back in the day, you know, there was a lot of efforts for that to happen on a national standard, which I think, if I'm not mistaken, was the intent of the National Certification Board um, slash exam, you know, when they first started. But even now, like I'll meet therapists from the West Coast and they've got a whole different philosophy as opposed to people from East Coast, right. Central America, and so it, uh, the states. So it, it's hard, I think. And all the different states have a different number of hours requirement. I, I want to say ours is 650. If you're listening, refer to the episode right before this one where we talked about Oregon. Um, <laughs> I know in New York, it's 1,000. Uh, right. Yeah, just the standards all, and then I can't remember which, but there's there are still some states holdouts where there's just you want to be a massage therapist. I guess you just say that you're just say that you are, (laughs) right? (laughs) Bananas to me. Yeah. Well, you know, I'll tell you that um, it's interesting you say that because that's one of the conversations that's happening in Texas right now. Um, uh, I've been involved with legislation and massage as well since I met this guy Raúl. And um, and I I like to observe and I like to kind of see the waves of of things happening, and right now it, I'm not sure if the the discussion is to completely eliminate um, regulation, but there but the discussion is leading more towards like um, let's try and find a way to to make regulation beneficial for the industry, as opposed to it just kind of sits there. Um, and it serves itself. I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, you know, there's a lot of licensing fees that come into play. For example, um, one of the regulation issues that that we're looking at is the enforcement part, you know, of unlicensed therapists. What happens to those folks or what happens to the unlicensed business? Well, there was a case recently here in El Paso, actually, where there was a place that was practicing without a license, and I think they had multiple therapists, um, and all they got, I think, was a fine mm. you know, and an opportunity to like um, get their stuff straightened out. Now, that may seem like a reasonable move, but given the history of unlicensed practitioners and and businesses all over the country, yeah. Um, yeah, it would be nice to hear that their their punishment sort of was something that would maybe send a better message to other people. Right. Who, who exactly. Who trying the same thing, yeah. Yeah, exactly. More of a deterrent, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So, but to your question really about national standards, I, I think uh, a body of knowledge may, may work. Um, I'm not sure about a philosophy of massage and – just to give you just a little bit more history on that, if if you if you're not familiar with it or or your listeners, back in the early '90s as well or later '90s, I remember some that the uh, National Certification Board was working on, or there was discussion of having like a, a tiered licensing type of thing, um, where if you did only massage but no energy work, you were considered 
a basic massage therapist. But if you did energy work, you were considered an advanced massage therapist. And a lot of therapists at the time were like, well, wait a minute. I don't, I'm, I didn't get into this to do energy work. I want to do manual therapy. Yeah. Um, why would I be basic? You know, why would I be labeled a lesser tier? Um, oh, and so yeah. I'm not here to support or not support energy work. But on, on a historical basis, that was the discussion at the time. And I think, I think it just kind of faded away. I think people realized, well, we're opening a can of worms here. Let's not, let's not yeah. go there. Let's not yeah. Go there. yeah. Okay, so uh, 500 hours now in Texas. What's right. what's a continuing education requirement? Give us uh, it's one. it's 12 hours every two years. Okay. Um, Texas has its own like continuing ed provider uh, licensing as well. Oh. Um, so it they will accept like a, some national certification stuff uh, courses and whatnot. There's a limitation on online classes. So if you're taking an online course with that involves hands-on stuff. Mm -hmm. They won't accept that as as towards your, your renewal. That seems reasonable. Um, yeah, they they want to make sure that people actually attend the class and, and learn yeah. there. But then you can you can take like ethics or pathology or you know anything along those lines. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. And and then um, for, just from from where you from where you sit, what's it like to work in Texas? Well, like like, like you mentioned earlier, you know. Austin, Houston, San Antonio, there, there's a lot of massage work. There's probably more work than there are massage therapists that are, that are willing to put the work in, if, yeah. if that makes sense. Um, here in El Paso, it's a whole different story. El Paso is like an uphill battle when it comes to promoting massage, promoting wellness. Um, people really trying trying to get more massage it, it, it's hard so from a business standpoint you've got to get very very creative in how you approach your marketing mm -hmm. um you've got to get creative on your pricing which a lot of people i've heard have a difficulty with because you know el paso is, is not a very uh, there's not a lot of money in el paso so charging Prime pricing can be challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, some people may have a different opinion about that, and that's fine. But um, a lot of people say, well, you really can't devaluate your work. And I always tell new therapists, you know, don't even look at it that way. Um, people first have to like you. Then they've got to trust you. Mm -hmm. And then eventually they become your long-term client. Yeah. But if they're not willing to spend, let's this is just an arbitrary number. Let's if they're not willing to spend seventy dollars on a one hour massage to see if they like it, it, it's a big risk. There's no test drive option there. There's nothing for them to say, well, let me try it out. And if I don't like it, at least it didn't cost me, you know, an right. arm and a leg. Which in El Paso, 70 bucks is an arm and a leg. Yeah. That's um yeah, in Portland, my part of Portland, that's mm -hmm. actually on the lower side. Yeah, so you can kind of see the difference. Sure, between, yeah. Yeah, but I'm, I'm actually um, a proponent for um, an introductory offer. Sure. It's been yep. working for me, you know, when, when it wasn't shut down, obviously. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a, a, a totally uh, valid uh, approach. And I just, I, I bristle at anyone who, like, pushes too hard at their agenda and saying that one way is the best way or the only way. And I think as, you know, people running a, our small businesses, we kind of need to see what we're comfortable with and what gels with our client base and just try things out and see what works. I totally agree. And it, and it really is just what works for your business model. You yeah. know, I think introductory offers, um, work that's just my opinion you know uh, I, we've had a membership at our place since like 2000 2001 way before a lot of the big big stores started mm -hmm. with membership options and stuff of course um software back then was not what it is today it, it really was at the end of the month and you're seeing your clients towards the end of the month you got to have that uncomfortable conversation and say, hey, so you know, you were a member this month. Um, 
are you going to stay a member next month? <laughs> it's like talking with your significant other and saying, hey, so we did pretty good during September. Are we still going to be together during October? I don't know. I think a lot of relationships might be better if they were having check-ins like that. <laughs> you, you know, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it was really just... The on- nature of software probably helps a lot. With Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It, uh, that that membership on paperwork is is great, but once software started making it optional for or possible, I should say, for those auto withdrawals and and whatnot, it just makes life a lot easier. And again, I know a lot of more boutique style massage places aren't really for that, or it could be maybe they're just uncomfortable with having people commit. I also find a lot of massage therapists have uh, a, a difficult time just charging and the relationship with money and charging for your services. Yeah. Well, Um, I mean, that's a, that's a symptom of the kind of person that the industry attracts. You know, we, we arrive here to help people to, you know, get them well and to be a part of that, you know, and there's a lot of, uh, there's a whole woo woo side of our, you know, like people are like, it's not about the money, man. It's about (laughs) people and, but yeah, we need to we need to balance a, a living with the helping of the people. And course, if you don't yeah. make a living, then you're going to leave the industry, and then you're going to help no people. So exactly, got to find that balance. Got to find the balance. Yeah, yeah. and um, I think when you have great software, it just makes it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Oh, I mean, shout out your software. What do you use? Well, um, I use MindBody. Okay. Uh, MindBody Online. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sponsored by them. I just. Yeah. You know, I, mean, I, I use Massage Book, also not a sponsor. Yeah, if they like, were interested. <laughs> oh yeah, right. My body, we're listening. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I made a note. I was just so curious because I, I looked at Rejuvenate Wellness, um, your center in El Paso. Mm-hmm. What is this signature style? It's something that it, it sounds different. It sounds like maybe it's um, of deep tissue, of deep muscle therapy. It sounds sure. like it's a little bit beyond what I learned as deep tissue in school. So if you could speak to your what what you're educating there and what you're practicing there. I'd love to hear it. Sure, sure, absolutely. So, you know, over the years, I think we all learned um, where deep tissue should be painful. At least that's when I was in school. Again, we're talking 1995, 1996. You know, deep tissue was considered more of a trigger point type thing with referred mm-hmm. pain patterns and, and stuff like that, you know. It's- Deep tissue should be painful. That notion is definitely still prevalent in the client side. Right. I don't Absolutely. Know if it's prevalent in the therapist side necessarily, but definitely like that's the expectation. Like I'm going to hurt and that's what I need. And right. No <laughs> right. price was enough. And yeah, that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. So with what we try to do with our approach is uh, we, we try to get deep, um, but it's, it's typically – from origin to insertion. And I know people freak out about that, especially on extremities, because we're all taught, you know, always towards the heart, always towards the heart. Mm. Um, and so, but for us, it's it's for deeper work. It, we always take it really slow, origin to insertion, because for us, the, our opinion is that if you elongate a muscle that's contracted per se, and of course, there's a lot of science behind all that and all that. But you, just from an overview, from origin to insertion, we're elongating a muscle um, as opposed to shortening a muscle that's already shortened because either there's pain or uh, there's a protective pattern that the client may be you know, holding on to, whatever the case may be. So that's, that's number one. Number two is really part, like as I mentioned earlier, is dropping the table as low as it can go. Um, and you really using your body weight. And it the best way I can explain that is if you look at a shiatsu, you know, and, and you're you're really that's actually truly using your body weight because you're standing on the person. But of course, more pressure you lean into the client, less pressure you lean away from the client. Um, and you use a very soft tool that's not gonna jab and stab a client. Mm-hmm. Um, and the heel of the foot and the you know, in the arch of the foot and, and whatever other tools are used, um, can get in there. I mean, they'll they'll get in there and you'll feel it, but it it's not where you can't even breathe. Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah. you you hit the nail on the head. Clients expect that sometimes. Yeah. They're like, you know, well, I used to go to so and so, and you know, they used to really get 
get you know get in there and stuff and then um they, they you know we just have a different approach for that yeah yeah, yeah makes sense do you sometimes even like drop a knee on someone are you that low like yep mm -hmm. like yep. on the hamstrings or something you might yep like, mm -hmm. oh, yep. yeah cool. absolutely yeah and and it's actually you know just to uh again just to reiterate it's a lot like a shiatsu in terms of leaning into the weight mm. uh, le i'm sorry leaning into the client with your full body weight yeah. um locking your elbows just enough to where you're not doing like a push-up you know back in the day with with the table tire you, you, most of us if the client said i want more pressure we we do that, or yeah. at least that's the way we were taught. You know, yeah. I'm talking in the early '90s. So, but with the with your table lower, you're able to do this. I'm not sure if you can see that. Oh, sure. Just lean in, and then also relaxing your wrist because a lot of times we'll we'll want to do this type of thing, and and it's really about just this doesn't do anything for for the pressure. It doesn't make us stronger. It doesn't make us heavier. Mm -hmm. It doesn't give us more gravity. So it's really more about just keeping your wrist relaxed and using your body weight on into the client. Do you have any videos of what your style looks like a little bit? Is there anywhere? You know, I I, I don't. Um, I see some of that if you ever take photos next time you're, you have sure. the option to. I don't know if you have anyone with you now that you can shoot videos with during this downtime, but. That's actually a good idea. I hadn't thought yeah. of that. Right now, I'm just trying to figure out how we're going to pay the rent next month. You know, with yeah, everything. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's a I great. Did a, uh, I did. Uh, I did some videos yesterday where I was. I, I there's someone in my a trusted person in my sort of a quarantine cohort that just sat as a body for me. Awesome. It was basically, like, if you're stuck at home with someone, here's how you might think about um, giving them some body work. Yeah, yeah I'm sure you've heard it as many times as I have. Like, can you teach my whoever how to yeah, give me a better sure. back rub? Because right. everyone always uses their hand strength and they burn out instantly. And like, so I was just trying to talk about how to like put them below you and use your, you know, lean in. and Sure. Because sure. right now as a massage therapist, we can't see people. So we might as well at least empower people to either work on themselves or to help the people that they're with. Totally agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, tell me if you don't mind about like what, what you're hearing in terms of how massage therapists are dealing with all this in your, in your part of the country up in Oregon. Um, I think everyone's kind of, um, approaching it in their own way. And I would just say, you know, however you're handling this is okay. You know, people just have to do That's awesome. Yeah. what they need to do to get through. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to sort of lead into my brand and just um, make myself more um, prevalent in the community and just like creating free resources for people to share. And I just trying to like hit my, think, think about um, <clears throat> how can I hit the ground running when it, when the doors can open again? Right. How can I, what can I do now to either educate myself or educate my clients? And so that when, when things are opening up again, I can just, just really go for it. Um, but yeah, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of anxiety. There's, there's people with, um, you know, with, with spaces and employees and, and rents to pay as, as you know. And yeah, I, I feel like the reaction is, is all over the place. I mean, the entire, the, the governor's order in Oregon it effectively shut down the massage industry. Although even if your state doesn't have an order, I would, I think there's definite um, a case to be made for voluntarily shutting down. I don't. Uh, can you can you speak to the state of your state? Sure. In terms of the ongoing. Yeah, uh, yeah. The the um the governor put out an order. I think it was March twentieth, and initially it was through April third. We mm -hmm. all knew that was not going to be the the actual case, and so the new one came out, and it's going all the way to the end of the month of April. Mm -hmm. Um. But, you know, funny story behind that, when the orders came out, uh, there's still language in, in, our, in our government code, local code, that classifies as masseuses in massage parlors. 
and I don't know what the language is like in Oregon, but for Texas, like everybody was like, what? Cause that's how the, that's how the email came out. Oh. Um, and that's how the order came out. And everybody was like, what? Well, I'm not a, I'm not a masseuse. And you know, just, yeah, it was interesting in our, in our occupations code, we are massage therapists, but in the local, um, I guess, uh, criminal code, if you will, they classify us as masseurs and masseuses. So Still a lot of a lot of work to be done there, but um, the the order came out and everybody just kind of shut down. We shut down on April twentieth and um, started getting a lot of calls from other therapists that I network with and folks that um, have worked with us and so on and so forth. A lot of my students from back in the day also calling. You know, what do we do? And I basically said the same thing that you just said. It's like you 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 have to handle it the best way that you can. Um, reach out to your clients for sure. If you have an auto pay going, like a membership going, reach out to your clients. Don't let them hanging thinking you're going to charge them. You know, um, try to try to instill some retention um, um, strategies there. But I, this is just me. You know, um, if your client wants to cancel their membership and even it's not within your cancellation policy, I think right now it's just the time for us to really say, what can we do for each other? And if my client yeah. needs to cancel, they lost their job, you know, it's pointless to keep them on the membership if they yeah. don't want to. Yeah. yeah. Are you, have you thought about, um, I, I'm about to release something like this myself, uh, like a, a package where if, if someone has the means by which to support you now by, by prepaying for five or 10 sessions, have you, have you put anything together like that? Uh, you know, I've thought about it, but we haven't yet. And and I'll be very, very transparent here. Please. The first week, the week of the of March twenty second, I think it was. Um, it was like, okay, well, let's just take some time and let's kind of you know feel things out, take care of my family, go out get groceries, all that stuff. The the following week, um, I was in a, I was a little bit frozen. Mm -hmm. Like I had all these things going through my head, like, okay, we need to do this. We need to do that. For sure. We were reaching out to clients, but I was frozen with like anxiety, uh, a little bit of fear. Um, what's going to happen? How's my landlord going to react and respond to this? Is he going to be cool about it? And so I hadn't, I haven't put any of that together, but I have definitely been thinking about it. Um, one of the things that we did do pretty quickly was started putting together videos as, as many people are um, and sending out to clients so they can do some self-care, as you mentioned earlier. Um, a lot of, I, I teach meditation and mindfulness. So that's one thing that, you know, we were offering. My wife's a teacher. So she's putting together videos on how to help your kids at home because a lot of parents aren't up and up on even Zoom or even some of the basic technology, kids can run around in circles, you know, with technology nowadays. Mm -hmm. So my wife's helping with that. And she's also, she even did like, uh, she got permission from an author and she's reading children's books to, uh, on video. And then we send them out to our clients. So that's cool. We're just trying different things. You know, the, I don't know if there's any right answer, but in terms of packages, I, I haven't done it. I've thought about it, but I haven't done it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how they'll be received and I'm not, you know, I don't have a lot of uh, expectations about it. I just thought, I yeah. think, I think that there are some people in my, you know, I, and I, again, I just started, so I have a pretty meager client base. Um, but I think right. some of them would be interested in sort of uh, supporting me in some way. So just Absolutely. To give that opportunity. And then if I, I was going to put a whole email together that basically said, Oh, if you want to prepay for five or 10, that's awesome. If you, you know, it's, it, I think, especially now as a therapist, given what we were talking about earlier, how, how our relationship with money is a little complicated and how we don't like to charge enough. And especially now it feels like sure. I ask yeah. anybody to spend any money. Like it feels wrong to, to do that at all. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just struggling with that, but, but giving them opportunities just to be like, Oh, if you can't support me financially in any way, that's okay. But you know what? I'm producing this podcast. Please share right. it with people. I'm producing these self-care videos. Please try them and let me know what you think. And 
Um, I made this video about how you can work on your friends if you're with your friends or your significant other and try that and let's see, let's have a conversation about that. So engagement, I think, is an, another another level of support. That's absolutely right. I mean, it really boils down to engagement. Um, I'll tell you one quick story about that. I, as I mentioned, I was I was a little frozen. I was kind of like... Um, like a deer, you know, a deer with in the headlights, just kind of mm-hmm. like, you know, I've got overhead. I got five massage therapists that work with me. Um, we've got a membership. How are we going? You know, it was it was quite a bit of stuff, right? So initially, that first week, as I mentioned, was was challenging. And then um, I got an email from one of our members um, when when we sent out the email about videos and, and self care. And her email was very, very uplifting because she said, you know, Victor, we're, our, the, some clients aren't, aren't going to be able to support you guys, but, you know, there's a lot of us that will. I'm one of those clients. I'm keeping my membership. Don't worry about it. We're here to support you. Um, we wish you the best of luck. You guys have always been there for us. That really, I mean, just hearing back from clients yeah. like that, man, that felt so good and yeah. honestly, like, energized me to say, all right, Vic. You've been, you know, you've been too, you've been scared for a week now. It's time to like really start taking action on all of this. And so yeah. that's what we've been doing. Makes yeah. sense. That's cool. Yeah. So um, uh, that's, that's all amazing. I, I, there was one comment you made in one of your re- recent episodes and I, 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 I suspect <laughs> you'll probably just kind of rehash your same thought, but I would love to just put it out into the world again. Sure. This idea of, uh, when can we get back to business as usual? When can we get back back to normal? Right. And you made this great point about, you know, like that's that's done with now. Like we don't want to get back to normal. We want to get back to something. You know, we want to. Uh, am I? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, you know, um, I, I the way why I said that and then why I still say it is because. This I keep bringing up this guy Raul, and the reason you know is because I want to give him credit to where I learned this particular the drop table technique that we call it. He calls it the work smart method. Um, but he's a guy who's always trying to do things better, and so that's a philosophy that I adopted, you know, early on. And when it comes to business and massage therapy, the when I went to massage school, my massage class consisted of. Uh, my my business class, I should say, was like, well, just, you know, print up some cards and do a lot of free chair massage events and you'll be all right. Pass out your cards and you'll be all right. And that that didn't work for, for me in my area, mm-hmm. right? So I knew right away, okay, we've, we've got to find a, a better way to do this. Um, I love my instructors, don't get me wrong, and I respect them to this day. But I think that's the business side of massage that they, that they started off in. And it may have worked for them, but times are changing. Yeah. So I, I've never really – go ahead. Well, I was just going to say with, with education, I think um, the schools are still doing a great job. There's so many great schools in, this, in the country educating on the clinical side. Right. But, I mean, and they are adding uh, – <laughs> we, we got some visitors here. <laughs> Hey. My kids are starting to, uh, to hey. call and All right. what they're doing, but um, the uh, there's resources like your podcast, and there's there's some other great bit, uh, massage focused business podcasts, and some some people who have online communities. So it may, maybe it's not all up to the schools to, right. to add the business component, though I think they should be um, doing Agreed. a little more. But there but there are resources beyond the, the schools at this point. Yeah, I think, you know, when I started teaching massage, I, I vowed, like, I'm going to try to do a better job at, at teaching the business portion. I I would even open up my, my mind-body, like, productivity report and my schedule, and I would show students, and I would say, look, when we in- implemented this price change, this is what happened. Mm. Um, we either grew or didn't grow, but I wanted them to see what it's like to try these different and try to be creative. Hey guys. <laughs> so, hey Victor. <laughs> what's up guys? Good to see you guys. You guys doing all right? These guys still get body work. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. But really is it's just about being creative. We can't get back to normal. You you're out, you know, normal's gone. 
right? Obviously. Um, not to sound doom and gloom, but I think it, it this thing really uncovered a lot of uh, there's our industry is very fragile. Mm-hmm. You know, as it is, it's not the first thing that most people think about in terms of their wellness, unless they're familiar with massage. Um, but we, we just have to find a way to to make it better. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. One, one step at a time. Yep. Hopefully this will be a, a catalyst for some really amazing change and we'll see where it goes. Um, you have some podcast episodes in the, in the, in the lineup. Are you still producing? Yes. Yeah, I am. Um, there was one I was actually going to put out right before all this happened uh, about an event that took place here in El Paso last summer, August 3rd. We had uh, about a three to five minute drive from our office. There was a mass shooting. Oh. Terrible. At a Walmart, there was like 20, 20. That I was, oh, I remember hearing about that. That was cool. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we went on lockdown. I mean, we had clients on the table during this time. I heard about, I mean, you know, so I was going to put that out. And then this came up and I'm like, you know, it's time. To, yeah. So what I'm working on now is just some ideas on how to stay creative. Um, but it's pretty much what we've been discussing, you know. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Um, well, I will keep an eye on that. I would encourage everyone to subscribe to the Massage Startup Podcast. And thank you so much for being here. I, I appreciate your time. Can, thank I, you for inviting I can, me. Uh, I can color in Texas now and check it off my list. All right. All like right. 50% of the country. It's so big. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. Man. You, you should probably even contact some like Austin people because it's a little bit of a different world. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, after after I get through all fifty states, I might swing back through. All right. Well, I'm, so, glad uh, to... I'm on this mission to. This is sort of a bigger picture to capture full length uh, massage therapy sessions. I think there's a lot of value in being able to show clients what different modalities from different practitioners look like, and people can benefit just from watching. Strangely, um, and then as therapists, we can learn from each other and. So the idea is that one day that will take me across the country and around the world visiting different therapists in different states and different countries and um, just bringing body work to the world in like a, an immersive sort of way. So That's amazing. That's when that amazing. gets off the ground, I'm coming to Texas. And All I'm right. Gonna, I'm going to see good. what this um, signature style really feels like. All right. Good deal. And, you know, uh, before we go, I just want to wish you, Nick, the the best of luck. You just start open your business and you came with this challenge, but you know what? We're all behind you. We're all in this together. Um, You're not alone. Uh, uh, You you know, um, I think across the country, massage therapists are feeling this and we're not alone. We have to be able to be vulnerable. If we're not vulnerable, we're not available for help. Mm -hmm. And, and sometimes that help is just talking to someone. So I feel a lot better you know, talking to you today, um, because, you know, we're quarantined, we're, we're in lockdown, kind of, and it's tough. So we're not alone, wishing you the best, man, the, the, all the success in the world to you. And I I look forward to to, to listening uh, to your episodes as well. Yeah, I I appreciate that. Yeah, it's so interesting. We're, we're physically distanced from each other. But in a lot of ways, I feel more connected than ever. It's really like I, I got on a Zoom call. We played some board games with my brother and my cousin. And I'm like, this would have never happened. Like I've, right. I've been talking to some of my, my family and, and friends more than I have. And I, that I definitely would have otherwise. So there, there yeah. are some silver linings that are, that are really special. Um, again, thanks so much for being here. And um, I appreciate it. All right. Appreciate Talk it. Have a good day. Thanks a lot. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Bye.